Project <coughs> Drawdown is a organization that was set up to map, measure, and model the 100 most uh, substantive solutions to reversing global warming. Um, and uh, I did write a book. I, I did write some of it. I edited it. It was 220 people created that book. It's a collaboration Great. of scientists, researchers, uh, activists uh, from all over the world. And that's a really important point to make because mm -hmm. the research we did uh, I'm just going to keep backing up if you come closer to me. <laughs> the research we did, um, uh, it was important that we came out with data that was um, robust and rigorous and mm -hmm. science based and grounded and checked and rechecked so that when people read about it or whether it's on the website or the book, that they had a sense that it was very solid. This is good information. And that was important because no one has ever actually modeled the 100 most substantive solutions, or the 50 most, or the 75, or 60, or 20, whatever. Mm -hmm. And that was after 40 years of knowing that this is the most severe crisis, uh, it beggars the word crisis, but anyway, uh, that civilization has ever faced. And we haven't really um, dealt with it very well to date. Uh, in some ways, at least politically and socially, um, that we've never made a list of the most impactful solutions. Mm -hmm. it, you, you can Google it and check it out and see if you can find it. It doesn't exist. And it's very odd when you think about it because the IPCC has done the science on what's going to happen if we don't act. I mean, really excellent, extraordinary science. But no one's actually done the math on the most impactful ways in which we can reverse global warming. And so Drawdown exists for two reasons. One is to name the goal, which is to go back the other way, as mm -hmm. opposed to mitigate, reduce, stabilize, which we think are kind of fool's errands, actually, given how high CO2 and greenhouse gases are uh, in the environment. Actually, when you add the, the greenhouse warming potential, of gases that are up there. We're up to 448, not 402. Mm -hmm. um, so actually, it's a lot worse than it appears. And um, so we want to name the goal, and then we want to, as I say, map, measure, model extant solutions. They're hands-on, practical, can-do. I call them W.W. Granger. In other words, they, we know how to do these. We are doing them. They're global. There's all scaling. We want to know if they continue to scale in a rigorous way over 30 years, could we achieve drawdown? That is to say, that point in time when greenhouse gases peak and then go down on a year-to-year -year basis as opposed to going up. And that was what the project was, and, and uh, it still is, but we've now published the book and published the results. Um, and um, I'm on the, what, the 25th day of it, and 30 days of talking about it. <laughs> and I got invited here by <clears throat> the Cloudburst Foundation, the Secretary General, mm -hmm. uh, to talk to the 52 high commissioners uh, of the countries that comprise the Commonwealth of Nations, which is about one third of humanity, 2.4 billion people, um, mm -hmm. and who have adopted Drawdown as a template uh, for economic and ecological regeneration through reversing climate change. So here at this conference, when you spoke today, uh, did, did you get a sense that, that you were sharing information that was kind of new to the, to the audience here? Or, um, and, and how was that information received? Well, I can't really say. I mean, each person is different. Sure. So they, don't, they don't speak as one. There are 52 nations, languages, cultures, which is so wonderful about the Commonwealth that it's so diverse. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that, and some people said, oh, well, I've, I know all these solutions, and some people were sort of agog that they didn't. Um, I don't think anybody really did know them all, because we had researchers from all over the world, and we didn't know them all. I doubt if the high commissioners did, because that's not their expertise. But I think what they were saying is, you know, they were just, they hadn't seen the book anyway. They just saw a few of the mm -hmm. slides, so that's what they're coming on. I think what we saw during the day was a real change from uh, a kind of what could have been a very bureaucratic meeting of people, the first two or three speakers read their speeches, 15 minute speeches, you know, they're reading and who wants to be read to really, you know? And, um, and then uh, I spoke and then David McConville spoke and then we went to Q&A. 
And I think what you could see in the room is a real shift uh, in the sort of comprehension that drawdown is, a, is actually novel. In other words, it's really new. The idea of, of reversal is new. Mm -hmm. The idea that these solutions um, are regenerative, both economically and ecologically, is new. The, really, for a lot of people here, I think the whole land use area was uh, had a lot of novelty, which is they didn't realize, I don't think, um, the extent to which there are solutions involving land use that uh, sequester carbon through photosynthesis. Um, and I think some of the solutions they saw were very novel. They'd never heard of them before and, you know, were curious. So, um, and by the end of the day, uh, people, the thing that I think that pleased me the most was that at the end of the day, people said, I'm going to change my language. And uh, twice uh, today, I spoke about the language around climate change, that it's how negative it, negative it is. It's negative in two ways, the jargon and lingo is a negative, like decarbonization, which is a, D is a negative, you know, um, and uh, negative emissions. And, you know, what I've said is the decarbonization is the problem, it's not the solution. We took carbon from our soil, our trees, and, and from coal, gas, and oil and put it up in the atmosphere. And uh, so what we need, is, need to do is recarbonize, is bring the carbon back home where it belongs. And then negative emissions is supposed to refer to that, sequestering carbon, but it's a strange term that came out of the science, you know, which is, but in English and other, the other 6,000 languages on earth, negative emissions means nothing at all. It means zero, like a negative tree. What's a negative tree? What's a negative carpet? I mean, it's nothing. And so, and then on the other hand, uh, around climate, you still see people saying, we're gonna fight climate change, we're gonna combat it, we're gonna stop it, we're going to, you know, prevent it, we're gonna, all of which is such scientific foolishness because the, the last thing you wanna do is stop change because the atmosphere changes every millisecond and always will. That's climate and actually it's a gift, it's a it's wonderful thing. If it didn't, we wouldn't have seasons or evolution. And so you don't wanna do anything to change because it's impossible and it's a fool's errand. The other thing is you don't wanna use military metaphors you know, this thing of fighting and, you know, like there's an enemy. What's the, what's the enemy? Please tell me what the enemy is. Somebody might say, well, it's oil companies. Well, how did you go to the store today? And how did you get here in London? And so we have to have language that is inclusive and it's not dualistic. And, and because that idea that there is an other, that there's an enemy or that there's a part of the earth that uh, we don't care about the oceans, don't worry about it, we can put it in the air, it's just smoke, or it's just, you know, coal, it's got a little bit of mercury in it, don't worry about it. I mean, this whole way of thinking about the Earth is what caused the problem. So if we use that kind of language to talk about how to correct it, it's the same mind that caused the problem. And furthermore, that language really alienates people. I mean, you're a coal mine in West Virginia, and people talk about you as if you're a villain, and these are people who sacrifice their families and their health, frankly, uh, unknowingly maybe, but uh, nevertheless to turn the lights on, keep the lights on for people all over the you know, United States and other places. And we should be thanking them and venerating them and taking care of them and stop and call. You know, I mean, for, for sure, you know, but it's not that we should see it, them as other or that we should see coal mm -hmm. as other and so forth, you know. Coal was just fossilized swamps, you know? And so the, the way we talk to each other and the way we listen, the way we uh, organize our thinking around this has to change so that it's, it's not so negative. In fact, not negative at all, frankly. Um, and, um, and that's the, the thing that happened today with so many people in the, in the circle at the end of the day said, I'm gonna change my language, I'm gonna change my language. They realized mm -hmm. that everything they say is negative, negative, negative. Even one man said, I told my children it was hopeless, I'm gonna come back now and say I was wrong. You know? And that's what drawdown does for people actually. They look at it and go, wow. And the reason is because we did the math. We did the math and we, we're not advocating this. We're not saying, we have a better idea. We're saying this is what the world is doing, and it can scale to reversing uh, uh, climate change, uh, global warming. 
Great. So I'm just going to close with, I, I wanted to uh, say that we appreciate that you use the word reverse at Regeneration International, where we talk a lot about we need to reverse and we can reverse climate change, not just mitigate it. Um, but I wanted to ask you then on a personal note, I'm going to put you on the spot. Do you think we can do it? Can we, can we reverse climate change um, in, in, in an amount of time that's, that's really going to save the planet? Let me ask you a question in reverse, <laughs> uh -oh. which, in reverse which is why do you think we can? I didn't say I think we can't. I'm just I was asking uh, if yes, you, you can. That's the implication of the question. Every question is a statement. So it's a common question, by the yes. way. So yeah. Um, I I don't think that we can't. Regeneration International is. is okay. Then why do you think other people? You're kind of asking that question. Because as a because I I guess I'm asking it because from our organization's perspective, when we put that out in in our communications, we often hear back that that's that that's unrealistic. And uh, we continue <clears throat> to, to say that we can uh, reverse climate change. Again, if, if we acknowledge all of these wonderful solutions that your book talks about and, and, and look at the interconnectedness of everything that we do. Um, but I guess I was just asking you personally. Well, in, in a way, I would say that your question was a surrogate for other people, because mm -hmm. you get the same question. And <clears throat> what I'd say about that is that uh, how interesting that m actually I think the majority of people who have some literacy about it actually think it's sort of game over. Mm -hmm. And it was really that uh, that started Project Data in 2012 when Bill McKibben wrote his piece, Global Warming's Terrifying New Math in Rolling Stone, and people came to me who are very knowledgeable activists and just said, they, they were like, well, oh. And they said, it's game over. I'm going to move to British Columbia and get a farm. And, um, <clears throat> and that's when I thought, actually, it might be game on, because it kind of reached that point of whether it's terror or um, resignation or despair. Mm -hmm. And that's actually a teachable moment in some ways. <laughs> and so I felt that was an indicator in the, another way, actually, that maybe you know, there was a receptivity that hadn't been there before, you know, because you had progressive, you know, Obama as a president, this, talking about the United States, and, you know, and like, he, he cares so much, and Michelle's so nice, and <clears throat> the deal. So all we, will be well. The deal, yeah, all's going to be well, you mm -hmm. know. At, at the same time, you know, the science is saying it's not, it's not well, and it's worse than you think it is. And um, so I think that um, absolutely it's reversible. There's no Excellent. question about it. I mean, and what's missing is um, that idea. But that idea has to be grounded. You know, hope has to pass the sobriety test and walk a pretty straight line to reality. Otherwise, it's delusion. And so, you can have people say that, but it's actually based on just antidotes and beliefs and, you know, hope, and which is not you know, it's just an emotion. Or <clears throat> you can produce something on like Project Radom and says, well, here's the math, here's what we're doing, uh, we know how to do it, we are doing it, it scales, it is scaling, this is the impact on carbon, it's scientific, uh, based on uh, peer-reviewed science, so we're not saying or thinking. All the other data comes from respected international institutions, the World Bank, the IEA, ASA, you know, WHO, uh, <clears throat> FAO, uh, and so we are not saying, you know, we created the data, we're saying we gathered the data, we gathered the facts, we gathered what the world knows, and reflected it back to the world and say, did you know this is what we're doing? Did you know this is the impact? Did you know that it's scaling? Did you know that if it continues to scale, these are the impacts. And we were very conservative on our numbers. We did not, you know, gin them up, or we didn't. We used other people's numbers. And when we had a choice on cost or carbon, we always chose the lower of the me on the median. We didn't choose the higher ever. So we wanted people to be able to come back to us and criticize it and say it's better than that. And they have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> people who know a specific solution or know it very well have said, no, I think it's better, I think it's better. And that is such a different comment 
So here you have a solution book, people say, I think it's better, rather than a problem uh, book where people say, I think it's worse. Mm -hmm. And that's really what's happened. People say, no, actually, it's really worse. Everybody has another story about how it's really worse than you actually think it is. And people said that today. You heard several people saying, oh, you don't really know how bad it is, you know. And it's almost like, you know, it's become, the, you know, uh, the, you know, pessimism has become a new, you know, sort of one-upsmanship, you know. I have a better story than this one about how bad we are and how fast <laughs> it's getting worse. Um, and what we're doing to ourselves is mixing ourselves in an emotional toxic soup, you know. And it's really affecting us. And we can accept and understand the science and the validity of the science, uh, respect the science, but see it as a problem statement. We can say it's a gnarly problem statement. We can say it's a super wicked problem statement. We can say that odds are probably 100 to 1. Okay, that's the odds if you think those are the odds. But now let's go. What are we going to do? We're here. Why did we come here? Because actually it's not a problem. It's an offer. And the offer is from the atmosphere. And the, uh, the atmosphere is giving us feedback. And the, it's a feedback loop. And all systems without feedback uh, fail. All systems without feedback fail or that for offend against it. And we are getting feedback, and it's actually an invitation to make sure, reimagine everything we do in our relationships, and what we think, our politics, our financial systems, but importantly, our farming systems, our agricultural systems, how we treat the oceans, what an ocean is. And, and, and those things are all interrelated. How we treat another person is how we treat a tree or a forest. And so we have been really, really rude, <laughs> really <laughs> unkind to this place that we live and to the people who, you know, the indigenous people, indigene, the original inhabitants, you know. And so this is like a kind of a, a, a sweet message from the sacred saying, guess what? There's another way, you know, because when you address climate change, when you address global warming, and you go and you expand the, the goal to reversal. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know, when you make something bigger, there's very little competition. <laughs> Whereas a lot of competition for people defining how bad it is. But when you make the solution really big, and, you know, then actually there's a big spaciousness, you know, for people to come in and join and connect. The next book I'm writing is called Carbon. It's really about a love story, falling in love with nature, falling in love with life itself. It's not about. But the first line is uh, carbon is the element that holds hands and collaborates. And I hope by the time they get to the end of that book, they understand that that's exactly what we have to do as a world, as country, as people listen to each other, respect each other, you know, and basically hold hands and collaborate. That's how we're going to move out of it. And that's the gift of climate change, you know, it's either happening to us and we're the victim or it's for us and we are the, um, the you know, we're, we're, we're lucky. That's perfect and, and I loved, uh, just to end on that, I love the, the concept of this is an invitation. It it's is an, an invitation, invitation to act and to change and to rethink things. And so. to reimagine and to create and, mm -hmm. and to celebrate each other because we need each other, you know, and we can't do it by ourselves or by a country or by a city, we have to do it all together, and we have to do it specifically in place, and we have to do it together, and interlinked, and interconnected, and share what we're learning, what we know, how we're doing it, what's better, what worked, what didn't work, etc. So it is basically, you know, the whole earth is going to have to collaborate and come together. Which was what this meeting was about today, Which coming is. together and collaborating. Paul, thank you. Thank Appreciate you, so you taking the time for thank the interview you. today. Okay. Thank you.